Uh, consciousness, I think, is the control model of our attention. And human consciousness is characterized by um, attention to uh, features uh, that are taken to be currently the case, that we keep stable in this way, so we can uh, vary other parameters, that we can make conditional variance in our perception and so on, and that we can uh, form indexed memories for the purpose of learning. Uh, then we have access consciousness, which is uh, a representation of the attention relationship that we have to these objects. So we know that we are paying attention to them and we know in which way we are paying attention to them. So for instance, do we single out sensory features or high level interpretations of sensory features or hypotheses or memories and so on. And this is also part of the attention representation. And third, we have reflexive consciousness. And this is necessary because the uh, uh, processes in our neocortex are self-organizing to some degree. And this means that the, uh, this attentional process needs to know that it is the sensory, uh, the attentional process. So it's going to make a perceptual re uh, confirmation of the fact that it is indeed the attentional process. And this makes consciousness reflexive. We basically check back, uh, am I spacing out or am I still paying attention? Am I the thing that pays attention? And uh, this loop of going back between the content and uh, the reflection is what uh, makes our consciousness uh, almost always reflexive, right? If, right. if it stops being reflexive, we drift, uh, drift off and often fall asleep, like literally. I suspect that consciousness is not that complicated. What's complicated is perception. So uh, uh, setting up a system that is able to make a real-time adaptive model of the world that predicts all sensory features in real time uh, makes a, a global uh, universe model and uh, figures out which portion of the universe model it's looking at right now and swaps this in and out of working memory as needed. That's the hard part. Mm -hmm. And uh, once you have that and you have a problem that is hard enough to model, then the system is going to model its own relationship to the universe and its own nature, right? So uh, you get a self model at that level. And uh, I think that attentional learning is necessary because uh, uh, just uh, correlative learning is not working very well. The uh, machine learning uh, algorithms that we are currently using largely rely on massive backpropagation over many layers. And the brain is not only such, uh, not such a neatly layered structure, but it uh, uh, has links all over the place. And also uh, we know that uh, the brain is more efficient. It needs very fewer uh, instances of, of observing a certain thing uh, before it makes a connection and is able to make inferences on that connection. And uh, so you need to have a system that is able to uh, basically single out the parts of the architecture that need to be changed. And this is what we call attention, right? When you are learning, uh, you have a phase where you uh, do a, a simple associative learning, usually right after you're born and before, when you form your body map and so on. And uh, after the uh, initial layers are formed, after the, the uh, brain areas are uh, somewhat laid out and initialized and connected to each other, you do attentional learning. And this attentional learning requires that you decide what to pay attention to in which context and what to change and why, and uh, when to reinforce it and when to undo it. So in some sense, the attention agent is an agent that lives inside of a, a learning agent. And this learning agent lives inside of a control agent. And the control agent is uh, directing our relationship to the universe, right? The, uh, you, you notice that you're not in charge of your own motivation. You notice that you're not directly in charge of your own control. But what you can do is you can pay attention to things. And the models that you generate while paying attention are informing the behavior of the overall agent. And uh, the more we become aware of that, um, the more this can influence our control. And this is, I think, what's meant by enlightenment. Once we notice that uh, we are not directly embedded into the universe, but that we are embedded into a set of representations about the universe and that we can also these representations, uh, we gain more agency.